Should you use Zoom to chat with your friends? Hey everyone, what's happening? So Luke Smith did a video on Zoom and its potential problems. Now, if you're unaware of what Zoom is, Zoom is a video conferencing service similar to Skype where people can hold video conferences with mass amounts of people and talk with video and sometimes you can do screen sharing etc with it but basically it's just another version of Skype and a matter of fact I think it's better um, than Skype so Luke had some complaints about Zoom so you know we're going to go ahead and jump over to a clip from his video and then we're going to talk about it the problem is Skype and Discord and Zoom have the same problems. Two problems I'll mention, I'll, I'll boil it down to two. One is the client side application, really the whole service is proprietary. What I mean by that is it's not free and open source software, meaning when you install Skype or when you install Zoom on your computer, you no, a, a computer programmer or anyone else cannot look and read the source code. That is important because Skype, for example, manifestly monitors your data. They look at what you're doing on your computer, what, uh, what's in your memory, what, you know, what programs you're running, everything they can, they will look at it. They have the ability to. And even if Zoom is not doing that already, because it is proprietary software, they have the potentiality to do that. That is something that they are able to do. So even if you trust Zoom right now, just say that they have the ability to do something like that. Same thing with Discord, okay? Proprietary software, a proprietary system. The second problem is that they are not properly end-to-end -end encrypted. They're not supposed, I mean, they were designed not to be end-to-end -end encrypted. What I mean by that is end-to-end -end encryption, if you wanna to talk to someone securely, you have to use end-to-end -end encryption. Um, it is a way of sending a message over the internet, except for it can, it, because it is encrypted, it can only be read by its intended recipients, okay? Now, Skype is not like this. What this means is, or, uh, you know, Zoom is the same thing. Zoom, what they'll do is, you know, let's say uh, you're talking with your friend. That video is not going directly to your friend. It's going to a Zoom server, but worse than that, it is not encrypted, meaning people on that server can look at it and see what's going on. Now, Luke's main complaint was that it's a proprietary service and that it's closed source and that you can't look at the source code because they have the potential, the potential of doing something evil or bad. Well, I've got news for you. Open source does not necessarily mean that you are safe from evil or from tracking or from uh, malicious code, etc. Now, uh, people can do the same things that you can do with proprietary software, with free and open source software. Now, the chances of you getting caught doing something evil with someone else's data are higher with open source because everyone's looking at the code, someone is going to catch if you put a tracker or a monitor in your source code. Someone's gonna catch that, then the word's gonna get out. People aren't gonna use your software, they're gonna fork it, take that stuff out, and re-release it. That's generally the way it works in open source. Um, in proprietary, they're probably not going to get caught unless if someone reads the end user licensing agreement. And points it out. And a lot of people don't care. But um, as far as I know, Zoom really doesn't actively monitor their usage but I don't know that for a fact. So yes, a lot of people are using Zoom as a supplement to their social life outside of the house now because everyone's shut down for COVID-19. Not a problem. However, yes, he does make some legitimate points and yes, there are alternatives to Zoom. And uh, he suggests uh, talks or Q talks for the client and uh, let's go ahead, let's take a look at that actually and see if it is a viable alternative to Zoom. So what is the Talks project? Well, it's a peer-to-peer -peer 
instant messaging protocol that has the ability to do voice and video calls as well. It also has the ability to link multiple people together, like so you're more uh, in a video call as well. Now, um, you can get one of the clients, which is QTalks, uh, as a flat pack here. I'll link this and the Talks website in the description below. But that's a basic description of what uh, the Talks project is. Now, uh, I've already started up QTalks right here. And uh, you have load profile and new profile. So, um, load profile will just be a username and a password. And a new profile, you just would create a profile. So, we're going to go ahead and create a profile. And I'm going to go ahead and just create a username and password. And there we go. We have a username and password. Of course, we have a client right here. Now, um, we've got, of course, a friends list that it looks like we have, a place for friend requests, and etc. Now, um, of course, you have group invites, uh, the ability to transfer files, and general settings. Here's your, here's your language, uh, auto start, uh, user interface. Um, basically how you configure user interface, privacy, you can uh, send typing notification and keep chat in history, you've got a blacklist, audio and video, of course you've got audio and video device, um, video devices and etc. Um, let's, uh, that's your audio and your video. Um, right now I'm using my webcam in uh, OBS so it's not going to show up here. Um, advanced, uh, you can make uh, talks portable. Now the way to add friends or have friends add you would be to click on your um, profile right here and you, your talks ID would be here. Um, or you have a QR code here. I'm gonna blow this out because I don't necessarily want this, but I would have like, um, but uh, people, but you would send this uh, talks ID to somebody via email or something, and this is how you would uh, get added, uh, or add, or your friend would send you a talks ID, um, etc. Um, now uh, I do like this um, interface; it looks quite nice. Um, now I don't have anyone on talks that I can uh, test this out with. But I've got the gist of it right here. Um, if you'd like to see an operation, I'm sure I can arrange to have somebody demonstrate it eventually. But um, basically right now, it's just a basic messaging and video call application. So is this an alternative to Zoom? Well, yes and no. I can see how talks would have a definite advantage over Zoom as far as end-to-end -end encryption goes which uh, would increase your privacy and there's no centralized server but the problem i see with this is the fact that it is peer-to-peer -peer. now i'm going to go ahead and pop a couple diagrams up on the screen and i'm going to show you what i mean now with a service like zoom you have a centralized server that every client links into centralized servers actually and they link in there and those servers do all the processing and you are linking into a central, a central point actually. And this can have advantages as because that central processing uh, server does all the processing of the video call itself. All that you have to handle is the processing of your video, the encoding of your video, and the decoding of the video coming from the server. Now with a peer-to-peer, -peer, you don't have that centralized server. Everybody is connected directly to each other via a loosely uh, knit together network. Now, yes, you have that end-to-end -end encryption, but 
that puts everybody's uh, call processing on the systems themselves. So if somebody has a low end PC, they're going to have a hard time running this program, especially if you've got four or five people talking or more. Unless you have a really powerful processor, you're going to have issues. And it's only as strong as its weakest user. It also depends a lot on the network activity and strength connectivity to the internet to depend on speed. Uh, Zoom would not have that problem because uh, uh, you're connecting into a centralized server. If you're having problems, it would only drag that one person down. If one person's having problems on talk, it would drag everybody down. So now I'm going to say this. Um, us use Linux use tubers, we use Zoom all the time. Um, shows like Big Daddy Linux Live, the way we do that is Zoom. Uh, we use Zoom and uh, really, there's no need for us to encrypt our traffic for this reason. We are broadcasting it live on the internet for everybody to see in the world. So there's really no reason to encrypt it because we are already broadcasting it anyway. So what this all comes down to is what is important to you, the user. And it's basically between whether you want privacy of the end-to-end -end encryption or the convenience of a centralized service and the low latency of that service. Or whether you are an open source advocate who will only use open source uh, protocols and software, or are you okay with proprietary software and services? If you want uh, open source software or uh, the end-to-end -end encryption, you're gonna go with the Tox network. And you're gonna deal with the drawbacks of that because um, of the uh, latency and all that stuff of having a peer-to-peer -peer, um, service like that. Now, um, I would say probably between two people, it'd probably be just fine. Or if you're just doing text chat, it'd probably be just fine as well. Because that would be, I would say text chat, that would be great for like instant messaging, like the old style instant messaging. But um, once you get four or five people on a peer-to-peer -peer network on a video chat, unless you have really good internet connection and really good um, and really good computers on all of them, you're gonna have a really really tough time uh, having a conversation. You, you're gonna have drop-offs. You're gonna have people breaking up and. Uh, that's that's uh, going to be the major drawback to talks. Now, if you want the convenience of having a low latency environment um, and a, a centralized server doing a lot of your video processing for your call, and all you have to do is worry about your own computer and uh, not and uh, one person not having to. Uh, dragging you down etc and uh because zoom is great for that and uh so um really it all depends on what you want whether you want the privacy or open source or whether you're okay with um, a proprietary closed source for the convenience of uh speed and having that centralized service so I hope I did a good job of presenting both sides of this argument and only you can decide what solution is best for you. I'm probably going to still consider, continue to use Zoom and uh, probably Biddle is too, but only, like I said, only you can decide what's right for you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, that's what that thumbs down button is for. And go ahead and click that subscribe button. And I will see you next time. If you like my content and wish to support my work, you can do so on Patreon. The link is in the description. 
Also, if you wish to see more, check out the videos on your screen.